In this video we're talking about the Fujifilm X-S10. Specifically we're talking about the Q button, Q menu and how easy it is when it's set up to change your filming settings while you're out shooting. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Florian. Good to see you guys. Hope you're all doing good. Today we're talking about the Fujifilm X-S10. Specifically, as I mentioned already, we're talking about this tiny little Q button and how you can set up your Q button or Q menu to make this camera very easy to use and you can change settings almost immediately. As you have seen maybe, I done recently another short video which I'm gonna link up here so you can have a look. And it is very simple and easy. You can change your settings from 24 frames per second down to slow motion or you want to change other settings, your bit rate, your frame rate or whatsoever. Today I'm gonna to show you how to set it up and how easy it is to use. Okay guys, here we go. Today we're talking about this little Q button and how easy it is to change your frame settings or bitrate or any sort of setting you want to change quickly with the Q button. So let's say you would be out shooting 24 frames per second and you want to do some slow motion in between. So you only or you just need to hit the Q button, go over to the Full HD high speed recording tab, twist your dial and type in what you want. In this case, let's say we should choose five times 24 frames per second at 24 frames per second. So basically 120 frames per second matching your 24 frame timeline. And then you hit your shutter speed button and your settings are dialed in. Keeping in mind guys that you need to adjust your shutter speed every single time. So you dial in your 240th of a second shutter speed and you're good to go and you can shoot. If you want to go back to your 24 frames per second, same thing. You hit your Q button, you turn the full HD or high speed recording off and you're back to 24 frames per second in 4K. You hit your shutter speed button you dial your shutter speed back to 48th of a second and you're good to go and you can shoot again. And this is how easy it can be with the Q button if you did set up your Q button for your needs. So and today I'm going to show you how to do so and then you decide which settings you would like to use in a Q menu to make your life easier when out shooting. So you can see I got my Q menu set up with 16 slots. So simple and easy. What you need to do is make sure you're in movie mode in your dial. Then you go into your menu and you go over the left hand side, go down to the setup, go over button dial settings, and then you go down to edit, save, quick menu for filming. And then you can choose if you want 16 slots, 12 slots, 8 slots or even 4 slots. In my case I chosen 16 slots. This gives me the most variety on programs or settings I can use and it did make my life easier as I went out shooting. So basically we choose 16 slots, dial over and then you got basically 16 individually windows which you can individually program to every single window can do a specific task or a specific function. So basically I did set up my first window with the shutter speed and if you wanted to change this you basically click your dial or controller and then basically it gives you a lot of options how to program your individually windows in total, you got four pages of different programs or settings. Going through a few like film simulations, dynamic range, white balance, white balance color temperature. When you would shoot Calvin, you could adjust your temperature, highlight tones, shadow tones, color, sharpness. Just a few, like as I said, you got four windows you can choose from and then 
you literally go through every single window and you set every single window to your needs. So I'm gonna set mine back to shutter speed now and then I'm gonna talk you through how I did set up my Fujifilm Access 10 to make my Q menu as easy as suitable for my needs. So starting off, let's first leave the menu and we're going through the Q menu. Hit the Q button and you automatically in a Q menu. So basically my first window is a manual shooting or my shooting mode window where I can decide if I want to shoot manually, program, shutter speed, automatic. So majority of times I shoot manually. Then the next window would be your shutter speed, which I left in, but then a shutter speed, I mainly adjust via dial anyway. Then the format, which format I want to shoot, such as like 4K, 16 by nine, or DCI 17 by nine, full HD 16 by nine, etc., etc. So depends what mode you choose or resolution. Underneath I got my window with my frame rates matching basically the mode I shoot. Then my next window would be my white balance window if I want to use a preset from Fujifilm or perhaps if I want to shoot Kelvin, if I want to shoot Kelvin and set the white balance by myself, I got underneath my Kelvin numbers basically where I can dial in what temperature I want for my Kelvin white balance. On the very left underneath the shooting mode are basically the film simulations. If I use a simulation, I can dial it in here if I want to shoot Eterna. Keeping in mind guys, if you would shoot F-Log, this would be slightly orange and would switch off this function. So basically let's switch quickly F-Log on, go back into the Q menu and it turned like a bit goldish. So that means basically you can't change any film simulation because you shoot F-Log. Then my next window is my ISO window. I left it in as well because sometimes it's quite handy if you adjust your ISO through the window, through the Q menu. Then underneath the simulations, I got basically my face detection, eye detection window where I can choose if I want to have the camera set to face detection, eye detection. Next to it would be my high speed recording or slow motion window where you got all your options of recording slow motion in full HD, such as like five times 120 or five times 20, 3.98 frames per second to bring you up to 120 frames per second or 10 times would be 23.98 frames per second times 10 would give you 240 frames per second slow motion. So there are quite a few options you can dial in, depends on your needs, depends on your frames per second and your timeline. Let's turn this back off and then the next two windows basically would be my IBIS um, windows where I can say, okay, I've got my main window for my IBIS, which I can turn off or I put the IBIS and the OIS on or the IBIS OIS plus digital image stabilization. Keeping in mind, if you switch this one on, the digital image stabilization, you get a crop, additional crop of 1.1 on top of your crop sensor. And personally speaking, I don't use many times the digital image stabilization at all. I usually go with IBIS and OIS. The next window would be basically your IBIS boost. You can switch on and the IBIS will work a bit harder and will try to provide you a more stable image. So, and then at the bottom line, I got the LCD brightness because sometimes you want to bump up the brightness or turn up the brightness. Depends on situation where you shoot. Are you shooting outside in a sunny day environment where you say, okay, I need to bump up my LCD brightness because I can't see anything. Or if it's 
bright, you're going to turn it a bit down. Then the aperture mode, basically, because my aperture is locked, so I can't change my aperture on a lens itself. I got it set to my thumb or to my finger wheel. It makes life a bit easier. You can just like crop a camera, change your aperture with a finger if needed and open an aperture again. So you can't accidentally change your aperture, keep filming, pay attention to your subject. And then you realize after I need to record the whole scene again because I changed accidentally my aperture on a lens. So I do like a feature having it on a finger for filming. When I do photography or shoot portraits, I set my aperture on a lens itself. So then we got the option of setting your bit rate. Usually I shoot 200 bits per second. I think 200 bits are more than enough on average to use. And then my last window would be my dynamic range, which is basically enabled right now as well because the camera is set to F-Log and F-Log, you can't set your dynamic range. But if we would go back into the menu and set F-Log off, and let's say we would use the Turner simulation to shoot today, then the dynamic range would be there and you can adjust your dynamic range from 100 up to 400. And this is literally how easy it can be to use a quick menu when you did set up your quick menu. But keeping in mind, guys, when you change your settings, make sure you adjust your shutter speed straight after you left the quick menu. Otherwise, you might gonna shoot the slow motion just in, with a shutter speed of 120th of a second and not on a shutter speed of 240th of a second as it meant to be. But this, how I did set it up for my personal needs, did work really well for me so far. It is easy to use. You got all your filming programs, needs or adjustments on a fingertip. You literally just hit two buttons, perhaps sometimes three if you need to adjust your shutter speed as well. And you're ready to go. You change it, you go into your Q menu, boom, Q menu, you adjust your settings and you're good to go. So guys, I will hope this was a little bit of help. And if you got any questions towards this, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, like, comment and subscribe. And I'm going to see you very soon, my friend, in the next video. Thanks, guys.